Hi, Mr. Yoakum. Cole West. Hi, Cole. This is Craig Hendon. Hi, Craig. So, how are you? Yeah. Uh, so you you called me and want me to come out, want us to come out here and look at your land? Yeah. So I've um, got this land here, and I found this really cool turtle the other day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That looks a lot like an Easter box turtle, mm -hmm. actually. You can tell by the little yellow patches on it. Huh. It's not quite, you know, just like your average little pet store turtle. But Craig actually is pretty educated on these turtles, and I'll let Craig tell you a little bit about them. Yeah, the uh, eastern box turtle is a pretty neat turtle. Um, it has a wide range. It goes all the way from Maine across to the lake states and then down to the southeastern states. Um, and it lives for a really long time, anywhere from 86 years to maybe even 100. Wow, 86 years. How does it live so long? Well, studies have shown that it's actually due to uh, the metabolism rate, and turtles have a really slow metabolism rate, and that's what enables them to live on 80 plus years in age. Wow, wow, these are amazing creatures. I'd really like to, you know, try and get more of them out here. You know, can you guys help me with that? Yeah, I'm sure we can come up with a management plan for you to help you do that. Actually, with this open hardwood like you have here, you've got a, a very good place to start because this is you know, the prime habitat, which is why you've seen them. And you've got, you know, you've got water source back here, which when they're young, up to, you know, up to about five or six years, they actually eat fish and snails and slugs and stuff. So so you must, you know, you got to have the water for them to find that stuff. And after that, you know, uh, once they're about six or seven years old, they, they quit being carnivorous and uh, they start being herbaceous. So we might need to open up you know, cut a few trees out of here, thin it up a little bit, get some more of them in here, but, because you need, like, blueberries, strawberries, they don't, they're not big on, like, green leaves, but okay. they do, they love, like, strawberries, you know, fruits and stuff like that, blackberries, mushrooms, and I, I actually see some mushrooms on the ground, which is probably oh, yeah. what they've been eating here, so, yeah, I think you've got some, but I think we could definitely get you more. Okay. So tell me more about these turtles, guys. Sure. Uh, another cool fact about these turtles is their shell. Unlike all other turtles, the eastern box turtle has a hinge on its abdomen. So if this is the bottom of the shell, it enables it to completely close the shell and completely wow. shut it off to any predators or anything. So that's another reason why the turtle lives for so long, is has really good armor. Wow. Wow. Um, so we got some water here, but it doesn't seem like very much. I mean, it's not very deep. Uh, do we need to widen this creek or make a pond or something? Well, actually, eastern box turtles are highly terrestrial. They do need moisture to be able to survive like any animal, um, but they actually don't live in water, despite what a lot of people believe. Huh. I didn't know that. So you think this would be enough water then? Yeah, I think this would certainly be adequate. Um, then the turtles, you know, are prolific maters and produce a lot of eggs and if you wanted to see that happen, um, they begin mating in April to May, and then uh, they begin nesting from May to June, and then the eggs typically start hatching around August. Um, so, you know, if you and the missus wanted to come out and see some turtles, around August would be a good time to see the young hatching. Oh, yeah, she loves those baby turtles. So, uh, so what kind of plan can we uh, put together to try and get some more? Well, we've, we've talked about it, and uh, we think we've got a pretty good idea of what we should do here. You know, you've got fallen rotten logs that are pretty plentiful, which is good because they like to burrow in that. And you've got plenty of leaves on the ground since you've got these broadleaf hardwoods down here. And they also burrow in that. And because of this, you know, this lowland area, the soil's going to be soft and they burrow there too. And uh, so, you know, they burrow for protection to hide from animals or prey, you know, predators or whatever. They burrow to uh, regulate their temperature because they're cold blooded. Okay. And um, so, you know, we need to keep these conditions like they are. But, you know, I told you earlier that they eat, you know, berries and stuff like that. Well, you know, we've got we've got some fungi on the ground that they can eat. But we, we feel like if we thin out, the, you know, some of the understory a little bit, not necessarily all the big, beautiful hardwoods, but if we thin out some of the understory, we think we can uh, come in here and maybe plant some some native trees or native bushes that are you know strawberries blueberries stuff like that and get it where they can get enough light where they can actually produce fruit because turtles love eating fruit okay and uh you know we were walking up the creek earlier and actually saw some fish so that'll be good for the young ones okay
because they fish, and I, I haven't looked enough to see snails or stuff like that, but I imagine if there's fish, you know, and it's running water, there's probably snails around. Oh, yeah, I've seen snails. Okay, that's good. So we've got them covered when they're young. We just need to, you know, open it up a little bit and get the habitat more conducive for when they're older. Okay. Because I feel pretty certain that we can we can grow young ones here. We just need to do a little work and uh, to be sure that we can keep them. Keep them, yes, and make sure that they live to the, you know, 85, 100 years old, wow. which you know is pretty cool. But uh, I don't I don't see why it should be any problem here. You know, I mean, it may take a little bit of money, but I think you know the investment should be minimal, especially if you like these turtles. Because if you know you can invest a little bit and you can get a desired outcome, then oh, yeah. you should be good. And oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I guess you know while we're factoring all this in, we'll keep in consideration you know how much you're willing to spend to enjoy this turtle and all that. But I don't I don't, I don't see why it should be a whole lot of trouble. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So we talked about you know thinning stuff out in here and doing some projects to try and get more of these uh, eastern box turtles for me. But uh, I mean, I've seen you know timber companies come in for and tear up land. So isn't that gonna you know run them off or scare them away? Well, anytime you enter the woods, you're gonna have some temporary effects. I mean, that's inevitable. Uh, but we plan to follow the BMP handbook at when we do anything, and, and um, I think that if we stick to that really closely, which we always try to, um, that the, the impacts that we have will be very short-lived and won't be detrimental to the habitat overall. Okay, so so we let's say we do this project and you know temporary uh, displacement of them. Uh, how how do we keep them long term? All right, well that's a good question. I've actually been thinking about that. Uh, I think if we set our standards on you know how we want to keep the forest looking overall, then uh, what we could do is we'll you know we'll create a management plan that covers this obviously, and we'll come in here and we'll use selection silviculture. Well, selection thin all of it, you know, on a five, ten year cycle, whatever it may be. And, you know, you you won't be able to look for a whole lot of income from the from the harvest, but it'll keep your stand open. It'll keep your stand in the conditions that we need for these eastern box turtles. And it will provide a little income, you know, to help pay for the rest of the stuff that we're doing to manage for them. And, it, you know, it should keep it thin enough where, I mean, where we can keep the habitat exactly like the Eastern Box Turtle likes it. Okay. Sounds good. All right, guys. This sounds like a great project. Uh, when do we think we can get started? Well, the best thing to do is come in when it's dry, and typically the winter is too wet. So probably the best thing for us to do would be to postpone until summer so we can come in when it's dry so we don't rut up the ground and, and make too much disturbance. Okay. All right. Well, I'll keep in touch. I sure appreciate you guys telling me everything about uh, these turtles and how to get more of them. I'm really excited. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds good.